what is up everybody thanks for joining me again on the channel if you haven't subscribed and um, if you want to ring the bell so you get notified when I drop new videos uh, I'm going out to the front to meet the truck which is delivering our zip system and our Advantech decking and I'm gonna drive it back to the job site we're gonna unload that and then we're gonna get cranking so um, thanks for stopping by all right guys so we got the zip system we got the Advantech on the other side um, we're gonna get that unloaded here and then we'll be good to oh we'll talk more about this later um, why we went with this and the benefits of it All right guys, so the Advantech is dropped over there. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I'm exhausted. Um, so I'm actually gonna go grab a coffee real quick and then um, I'll be back and we're gonna start working. We also have the Skidster coming today because it didn't come yesterday. Um, so lots of stuff to do, I need to be caffeinated. What's up Bear? How you doing? How you doing? We're gonna get some coffee, okay? Maybe they'll give you a little schnout bucket or something or whatever they call it. Oh, you're gross. You good? All right, let's go. All right, guys, we're going to Cold Smoke Coffee and we're gonna grab something to get me going today. America. All right, guys, so we are getting ready to put on the Advantech decking, which is right there. But there's a few things you wanna do before you start throwing your decking down onto your framing, especially if your framing has been sitting out in the weather for a few days, a week, or whatever and sorry about the wind but um so this framing has been sitting out here for about i want to say two weeks which is a lot longer than i'd like but it's not that big of a deal but when you do that you want to make sure you go over your entire um framing all, all of your framing members with at least i would say a six foot level if not um an eight foot level which is what i have right here um what i'm doing is i'm going and i'm checking everywhere to make sure that my none of my uh, uh, joists have popped up. Um, I don't see any, any on this side, but I do have a couple on that side. And that none of my, um, uh, none of my band boards have swollen or sunk or anything like that. Because the thing is, no matter how good of a framer you are, this wood has moisture in it, it has a grain to it. So over time, as it either dries or it gets wet and then dries, whatever happens, it can potentially kind of arch or, or, or bow with whatever grain is in the wood. And if you do, and it's just a little bit of swelling at the edge, I'll show you what you can do. So you can just take a planer, do a simple pass, knock down a 32nd or a, 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 a 16th, and then you can go from there. You just don't want any of these boards sticking up on the edges because that's gonna create issues down the road. So just make sure you go through and you check all those. Another thing that you need to do is go down the center of your structure, or should I say the center, the center of each each section um, make sure that none of your boards have um, arched too much to where you're gonna have problems overall what I'm trying to say here in long form is make sure your framing is perfectly flush and level before you start tacking down this Advantech because once this Advantech is on I promise you it is not coming off so just double check triple check your framing make sure it's exactly where you want it to be and then get to throwing down your Advantech can I, can I stand like this? Can you do this on YouTube? I'm gonna do this. This, this feels good to me. This feels natural. This, this gives me that Larry Hahn feeling. No, but anyway, guys, I wanted to talk to you about the Advantech decking I'm about to throw down on this structure here. I'm gonna get a little nerdy with you guys for a second because I really do love this stuff. Many of you who follow me or have followed me know that I love restoration. I love doing remodels on 1900s houses, 19, 1920s houses. And the reason behind that is because the craftsmanship that was put out there back then was, uh, 
with a different mindset behind it, right? They were building these homes to, to hand down to their kids and their kids' kids and to really make an investment into the land. Nowadays, there's a lot of people that build purely for bottom dollar, right? Like, I just wanna get in and get out with the least amount of money spent because this is probably just gonna be put back on the market in five, 10 years. So when I build a structure, I really build it because I want someone to be coming back around in 60, 70 years, looking at my, my, my structures and being like, I wanna remodel this because the craftsmanship is so good. So that's why whenever I'm building something, it really comes down to the materials I use and I wanna use stuff that's gonna last for a long time. And that's exactly what Advantech and Huber in general presents and gives um, the, the builders with their product. So first off, I wanna say a huge shout out and thank you to Huber uh, for partnering with me on this, on this build. Um, so diving into this Advantech decking, it's three quarter or I think 23, 30 seconds, however they say it, I, I can never figure those things out. Um, this stuff is amazing because it's water resistant. Now, if you look at Huber versus, uh, you know, your standard OSB, you're going to see, which is OSB stands for oriented strand board. Basically it's a bunch of strands that are adhered together and then put under pressure. And then they, they basically stick together as a panel. This density wise and the adhesive that they use on this is so it actually chemically infuses with the wood versus just being like a glue together like it's like putting elmer's glue on something and gluing it together versus actually infusing something with that adhesive everything is bond and bonded and sucked together that's what the advantech decking is if you guys have ever built anything or you've seen buildings go up with osb osb is one of those things where as soon as you put it on the home or you put it on your floor you're wanting to cover it up as fast as possible because if you get even as little as one day of rain your joints are gonna start swelling up. I, I had it on the last build that I did. We did a huge 4,000 square foot build and the second floor was all OSB. We got stuck in this rain cycle here in Texas and it sat out in the rain for probably about three weeks off and on. And uh, it was a nightmare. I mean, you're going back, you're grinding down edges. You're seeing it kind of flake up as the water gets kind of absorbed into it. It kind of flakes up with like little corn flakes coming off the top. Um, it's kind of a pain to work with and it's stressful for a builder to be working on a job site and you throw down a product and it's out in the elements and it doesn't do good in the elements. So what's awesome about Advantech is that it's meant to be out in the elements and it can last, I think I think 500 and something days, don't quote me on that, but I believe it's over 500 days that this can be out in the weather and they've done extensive tests on this. So that's one, obviously, I mean, if that's the only reason you, you switch to it, I mean, that's good enough. But the other aspects of this is that it has this Advantech adhesive that goes along with this with this subfloor. This gives you maximum hold and uh, the ability to really secure your structure with some awesome subfloor. So that's all I'm gonna say about it right now. I'm gonna show you some of the layout things that they have on here, which are insanely helpful. And um, just some other aspects of, of this product that I love. I'll show you how to use this applicator and the applicator gun um, to get the adhesive onto your subfloor and then um, We'll go from there, guys. Four feet from the side that I'm starting on, I'm gonna mark this, put, set a nail there, and then I'm gonna pull a chalk line all the way down there, measure four feet out, and snap a line. This way I know when I put my subfloor to that line, I'll have a straight line to continue on. If you go off of your rim board um, or your band board, whatever you call it, you it's not always perfectly straight. So if you go off that, you might have some wobbles on it, which means your second seam will end up being off. So best thing to do is to measure out four, measure out four, snap a line, and then go off that line. So of course, my chalk box of five years decides to break today. All right guys, so I just snapped my line on four foot. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag out my panels I'm gonna put them on the opposite side of four foot upside down. So when I do all of my subfloor adhesive, all I have to do is flip them into place and hold them there. 
and then um, we'll be able to go from there. So I'm gonna unload all these and get them out there. All right, guys, so I have one row of Advantech laid out. Um, it is upside down and four feet away from where I wanted to go. Um, the method behind this is basically so that I can put my adhesive down with a pathway, and then I can just flip that board over on end. So basically pick it up, flip it this way, and it'll land exactly where I need it. I can shift it just a little bit, and we'll be good to go. Um, the first row is a little more difficult because I will be standing on the, uh, the joist uh, while I'm flipping it, obviously. I could lay out two rows on top of each other, but I, I'm only, what, I'm 24 inches off the ground here and, and maybe four and a half feet off the ground over there. It's not a big deal to stand on these, uh, these joists. I will say this, I would apply, I would get the first sheet set perfectly, kind of rack your, uh, your flooring joists uh, to where they're perfectly on center, uh, because as you go down, Usually it's not too bad when you're close to your rim board, but as you go down towards the middle of, of your joist, they can get out of, out of center. So you might not be perfectly 16 on center. So as you lay down the first row, don't just go through and screwing them in. Make sure you rack your boards, your, your trusses, your, your joist, whatever it is that you're putting this on to make sure it's perfectly on center. That will ensure as you move forward, everything is sitting where it needs to sit and you'll be good to go. Without any more wasted time standing here talking, I'm gonna go start applying the adhesive. Oh, actually, I lied. I'm talking some more. Stick around, guys. Don't, 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 don't get out of here. I got, I got information for you. This adhesive is amazing because one, it is the equivalent of eight, eight of your regular construction adhesive, which means you don't have to change this out. For every one you change this, someone else would have changed eight of the uh, construction adhesive. Two, it has an applicator gun with a nozzle, so you don't have to reach out as far. Um, it gives you some distance, uh, an extension of your arm. Three, it is easy to pull. You can apply this up to 105, I believe, degrees, or down to 20 degrees, and it comes out the exact same. So that means there's no early mornings destroying your forearm, trying to squeeze construction adhesive out of a caulking tube. Um, this just flows out, it's a foam form, and it's, 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 it's freaking awesome. floor has another awesome uh, little bonus to it is that it has a layout grid on it so circles would be for 16 on center so if I just look at my circles that's gonna I already know that that's gonna be my 16 on center which is what I'm going off of if I were to lay it 24 on center see I got these squares right here I just hit those squares that way there's no guesswork if I'm screwing like this see I can't see the truss behind me which is behind me 
I know if I stay on these dimensions, these squares or these circles or these diamonds, I will be nailing my joist exactly where it needs to be or screwing my joist. So circles would be 16 inch on center, diamonds would be 19 and 3 16 and uh, the squares would be 24 on center. And you just, you can go, you can drop, drop them down, go through, quickly nail them off, screw them off. And it's just an awesome feature. Um, I will note here, since I'm already talking, you wanna leave about an eighth gap on each side of your boards, um, just for expansion and contraction. Um, other than that, the uh, groove side actually has its own built-in spacer, so you don't have to worry about that. But anyway, first row is down, and we were working on the second one. Let's get it. All right, guys, so the US Rentals Skidster just got here. We are going to unload this thing, and um, I'll probably finish the decking first, and then we'll start doing some land clearing and some other stuff, so let's get it. All right guys, so my skisser finally showed up. So what I'm actually gonna do is bring this Advantech a lot closer to this uh, build site. That way I'm not carrying sheets that far. I'll be able to just slide them off right on to the, uh, to the subfloor um, and just less carrying, less work. So when you have machines, use them. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. Right, guys here's a little quick tip uh, when you're cutting sheets of OSB or Advantech whatever you're cutting sheathing doesn't matter when you want to just leave your board in place and cut on the stack um, you can set your blade to perfect depth I personally don't like risking cutting into my other material I don't like the way it looks um, so first thing would be push your sheet out maybe a half inch an inch doesn't really matter just so when you hook your tape to measure you're not accidentally hooking another one of those pieces of uh, OSB that might be sticking proud um, you want to pull your measurement in this case. I'm just doing uh, four foot Because I'm just cutting the sheet in half So let's go ahead and mark that real quick Score it bam now rather than picking this sheet up and moving it somewhere else What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab a piece of scrap wood. I'm gonna lift this up and I'm gonna put it pretty much right directly below where I'm cutting, right? It's a scrap piece of wood, doesn't matter if I'm cutting it or not, uh, it's just there. I am gonna set my saw to depth fairly close, but I don't have to be too precise about it. Just getting it so I'm cutting through, and then I can cut. And that's it.
right, guys, so we are done. I am done with the Advantech um, subfloor. Super easy, super simple to throw down. Um, with that uh, ad adhesive, it just flies. It's easy to get out. I used one and like maybe a quarter of that can. I think I did three sheets with that last can. So one can did 98% of this. So um, super, super simple process. The nailing uh, grid is, is also just epic. Um, big fan of it. And man, this sturdy, sturdy. To fasten this, uh, if you're doing uh, dimensional lumber, it's probably best you do screws. Um, but I actually use two, I think two and a quarter inch ring shank nails, which I, I mean, I loaded this thing up on, it, it's not going anywhere. Um, if you have the ability to use screws, you can. I just, as a one man show, um, that was just gonna take me too long and I don't have one of those little uh, automatic screw guns. So anyway, overall, everything's looking amazing. And uh, next up is wall framing, guys. I think that's all I'm gonna be doing today because I have to go do some uh, land clearing with the skidster while I have it. But uh, I appreciate you guys hanging out with me and getting this deck done with me. Next up is some wall framing and we're gonna be using uh, zip system sheathing um, on those walls. So um, yeah guys, I'll see you on the next one. Oh, FYI, the flex tool saw, absolute beast. Absolute beast, get yourself one. All right guys, I'm out. In the smoky light And in the rain Working through the night And through the haze You lay it down each day With heavy eyes Just to wait Just as time